Hi, it's Brian with Everything X Carve. Today we're going to pick our laser software for our Opt Laser 6 watt laser. And we're going to do some burn tests, which you'll see laid out here. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Today we're going to pick the software we're going to use with the Opt Lasers 6 watt PLH 3D series XF Plus laser for the X Carve. So there's two different types of software that I've narrowed my search down to, and that was Lightburn and then the V Carve um, by Vetric laser add on module. Now, the laser add on module is $50. Uh, for it to be used with your G-code settings versus Lightburn, which is $40 uh, for your Greeble settings. Now, if you needed a DSP license for Lightburn, that would be $80. I don't need that. I'm running G-code, so it would be a $40 license for me on that. Now, with VCarve by Vetric, you're running that laser add-on module in the vcarve software it's just an add-on so everything that you're doing if you already have vcarve it's going to come seamless for you it's going to be fluid uh, whereas lightburn it's its own setup it's going to run and move and do everything in lightburn uh, from moving your axes uh, adjusting your z uh, your spindle height, everything can be done there through Lightburn. Uh, whereas with VCarve, I don't know if you can do that. I haven't uh, taken the leap yet to jump in and buy VCarve, uh, primarily because it's about $350 to $400. And then the add-on uh, for the laser module is 50. So you can kind of guess where I've gone to. I decided to choose Lightburn. One, it was $40, it was cheaper, uh, and it's been out there for a while, whereas the laser add-on module is something that's new. Uh, when I get the V-Carve, I definitely am going to be trying that laser module out, and I do plan on getting V-Carve, just not yet. I, I'm, still, I'm still playing an easel, uh, and that for me is, it's an investment that I do plan on making, but just not right now. So with Lightburn, a few different things that we went and we'll go to the computer here and show that. Once you have Lightburn installed, open up the program and it's going to pop open up the devices uh, section to help you add your laser as the first time setup. Now, if it doesn't, you'll go here to where it says devices to do that. Uh, you can do find my laser, create manually or import. Uh, I would do it create manually and that way if you are using the X carve you're going to use the Greeble setting you're going to connect it verse via serial USB and then you can name it here Greeble X carve we're just going to do test for the, the install now, the axes of these are in the light burn part of the Opt Lasers instructions. And those instructions start on page 16. So what you'll want to do is you'll go down and you'll look for your Z, excuse me, your X and your Y axes. So your X axis is 770 and your Y is 780. So you will put those there as 770 and 780 and click next now with the x carve usually you start at the front left i am not going to auto home my laser on startup because i would prefer to zero my work position with a macro which we'll get into later and that's it so that's it really for for the install piece you're going to then want to go to your light burn edit and device settings and this is where you're going to uh, change some settings in the system here to help uh, get your X-Carb up and running correctly. So you want under your Z-axis control, 
enable Z axis, relative Z moves only, fast white space scan of 8,000 millimeters per minute, enable the laser fire button, enable out of bounds warning, and return to finish position. And then your S value max is at a thousand. So that's also where you did your setting in easel to put that command in so it doesn't fire anything beyond there. And then click OK. The next thing you also want to make sure is when you are looking at using a CO2 laser versus a diode, for the diode lasers, you want to select the millimeters per minute. So it's currently, it defaults here. So make sure that if you have any issues on that prior screen that you go here first and select better for diode millimeters per minute. And that's really it for, for setup. So a few things that I did in Lightburn, and these have been a complete game changer, are setting up your macros. Now I've done six different macros, and this one right here, the zero work position, we're gonna right click on that to show you what the code is. That's G54, and then enter on a different line, G10 space L20 space P1 space X0 space Y0 space Z zero and that uh, is amazing because what you'll do is you'll go in and you'll put your workpiece down to where you want to start say you want to do that that bottom left corner if you've got that marked out then that's great but if you want to start right here and do this just right here you can frame out your piece uh, by going to the frame right here once you've got something over in your design that zero workpiece position is awesome. When you're moving around, and say you've got it up on the far right hand side, you can do the go to work position. So once you zero it out, you've moved somewhere else. You can go back to your work position by doing this code G54, G0 space X0 space Y0. And that'll move you back to where you zero positioned it. Uh, now, these two are very important, the enable laser function. So before you switch to going from carving to laser, you need to do this code. So to enable your laser, you want to do dollar sign 32 equals one. To disable your laser, to go back to doing your X carve with your, your end mill bits and actually carving, is dollar sign 32 equals zero. So just make sure this is kind of like your on off switch here on to play with the laser off to stop it. And then firing the laser so you can see uh, when you are putting your position for your laser to where you want it to actual start kind of like almost doing your almost like trying to zero your work piece with one of these. You'll want to fire that laser to get it right where you want it. That is M3 space S1 to fire your laser. And then you'll have to send the command to turn it off by doing M5. So all you have to do to create these macros is right click on any of the spaces and that will allow you to open up that macro to use. Now, one thing I learned when you were, when you're doing stuff with the laser is you need to have this power setting in order to do your frame out by hitting shift and then holding the frame button to line out your work piece to make sure it's all in the frame that you want or the work area itself. So the difference between the square and the circle is this is framing out the entirety of boxing in your workpiece where this is actually going to circle in to um, say you've got this like this right here this basic power it's going to take and curve down in and come around and then come back up on the circle whereas the frame x frame or the square frame is just going to do one complete square what we'll need to do is we'll create a little circle We're gonna set our XY, our zero work position right there. 
So that way we can frame out now under the move, the power 25%, 0.25%. This is where when we do the shift and hit frame. So once you've got your laser turned on, then you should be able to hit shift and then frame. And I can tell you 0.25 is too much. This is what happens when you do the frame. That's your square, and that's doing your circle. And you don't have to hold the shift button. You just do shift, click, and then it'll frame it out for you. With light burn, your power settings are gonna be different, and I strongly recommend that you look at the light burn tutorials. That's how I've learned everything so far. With the exception of the shift, uh, holding down the shift button and doing the frame and making sure that you've got that percentage over on the power under the move set uh, tab. That took me a minute because I was getting a little frustrated figuring that out. So little tip, uh, shift and then hit your frame, but make sure on the move that you've got your power percentage. I did 0.01%. If you do anything beyond that, you're most likely gonna start burning, so try to do it as low as slight setting possible and work your way up until you get a good, um, a good light. All you need it is to frame it. You don't want it to actually burn like it did just here. So with your woods, each wood is gonna act differently as you burn it. This is a six watt laser, and as you can see, and we'll zoom in here, we'll go into the MDF first. With the MDF, so starting out with your power scale, we're gonna go 10 to 100%. And we started at 100 millimeters per minute and worked our way all the way up to 2000 millimeters per minute. Now there's a quite the difference here in scales. So if we look at the 10% at 100, you've got a nice dark char and then you start getting a little more depth with each one that you go down. Now that 100%, grab my fancy little caliper here. Make sure we're zeroed out. 50 at 1.4. Three millimeters. 100%, 100 millimeters per minute drops you at 3.0 millimeters of burn depth. So that's with the MDF. That's incredible. But as you can see, your char marks start to lessen and lessen as lighter and quicker as you get. All the way up to where on the MDF at 1400, it's almost non-existent at 10% power and 1400 millimeters per minute. So I would highly recommend if you're gonna get a laser and you're going to start using it, I would do a couple test pieces like this to help you out. So moving over to plywood, you get a little different result. Over here, I got zero, 10% uh, almost right here at the 600 millimeters per minute at 10%. So as you can see, quite the difference based off the wood. Always make sure that you're doing some sort of test run with what you want to car or what you want to burn because the results are going to vary based off of what you would you use. Looking at the differences here, you can obviously see a difference. More of a brown versus a black here, whereas you've got a, a, a dark, dark brown and a, a nice black here. So make sure that you're testing your pieces um, this this 
This is just a D&D &D dice tray that my daughter wanted me to do. And this is with pine. I did this at 80% at 1700 millimeters per minute. So looking at the chart here, if I were to go 80% at 1700 millimeters, that's what I should be at right here. But this is just hard, this is just straight pine. So like I said, everything's gonna be different. That is not the same based off what this chart is and here. So try and test it on a scrap piece anytime you do something like that. So all in all, I am absolutely loving my brand new laser from Opt Lasers. It is amazing. I mean, once again, the, the polished aluminum is awesome. Uh, never leave it unattended. Um, I will tell you, um, when I was actually installing this, I saw a fire uh, with a melted laser inside the wood piece. Don't leave it unattended. If you're gonna get light burn, there's a pause button. Hit the pause button, it'll stop the gantry dead in its tracks. It'll kill the laser. Do whatever you need to do. Come back, hit resume. It's a lot safer, a lot easier to pause it just for a couple seconds while you do what you need to do and then come back to it uh, instead of coming back to a melted puddle of plastic on your, on your work piece or um, burning this, which I don't know how you burn aluminum, but nonetheless, you don't wanna, there's a first for everything. You don't wanna come back to, um, something from Terminator. <laughs> One really cool thing that I did was on my sacrificial waste board that sits on top of my Inventable stock waste board, because I didn't want to ruin the waste board that it came with. Um, but this one, I don't care what happens. I was batching a whole bunch of coasters, and if you can see it, there's, there's a whole bunch of circles here because um, I didn't want to measure 50 pieces of wood every single time. I don't care about this waste board. And you know what? Etching the, the, the waste board here to do all 24 numbers on this side, the 24 here, and to do these grid squares at a half inch a piece, it took a total of an hour and 37 minutes to do this. Ah. So I did this at 1700 millimeters per minute at 100% power. And it looks like it was drawn on. It looks phenomenal. And then the numbers, they've got a good, nice uh, depth to them. And those were also done at 1700 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Now, I know that with this laser, uh, Opt Lasers makes a lot of laser uh, assembly kits for other machines outside of the X-Carve, from Workbee to Open Builds to Shipoko. There's a ton, uh, CNC for noobs. There's a ton of different laser kits that they make for this, as well as op lasers. They just came out with a 15 watt laser. Uh, don't see a need for me to do that yet, but Maybe if I wanna start etching stainless steel or something, when I, once I get in the steel, I might upgrade from this. I really do like the Opt Lasers. I love the magnetic mount. Uh, all in all, I would recommend this laser hands down. It's been amazing. It's been easy to learn. It was quick to set up. All right, everybody, so that's it as far as uh, the unboxing to the install, to the test, uh, and just a few little things that I've done already. Now it's to get to play with it, do some carvings and some etchings at the same time. That's it for this. Don't forget to check out the Everything X Car Facebook group, as well as the Opt Lasers Facebook group. Both groups have a bunch of people in there to help you out. Um, and if you liked what you saw, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to subscribe. 
So until next time, this is Brian with Everything X Carve. Thanks for watching and having an amazing day.